Next speaker on the stage is uh, Ms. Lena, uh, Lisa Svensson, Ambassador of Oceans, Seas and Fresh Water from Sweden. The stage is yours. Thank you so much. It's an honor for me to be here today. It's actually my first visit ever to Helsinki. Do I dare to say that? Um, this conference, I know, built on a long tradition between the policy and the, the policy and scientific community. But before I start my remarks, I would like to um, send my warm regards from the Minister of the Environment of Sweden. She was a former proletarian, and in that capacity, she put a lot of effort into the bonus program. And I know that she would be, have loved to be here today, but she sent you her warm regards. So I am the newly appointed um, Swedish ambassador for ocean, seas, and fresh water. And obviously, there is not one function, one country, one single item that can solve the problems of the seas. So one of my duties is to work with policy coherence. And doing that by linking national, regional, and international initiative and processes. But also work with different stakeholders, whereas business community, scientific community is very important, as well as, of course, as other policy areas. We talk about human rights and fighting the illegal fishing, for example. We talk about the link to energy and the link to sanitation and food. So there is a lot of issues that we need to cross fertilization and cross border. In my remarks here today, I would like to focus on two aspects. And one is the growing importance of research for the informed policy decision. And the second issue that I would like to bring to attention is the research as a precondition for innovation and business development. But let me elaborate a little bit on the first one. The scientific community was the first to address the challenges of the seas. Science pointed out the special brackish water, the problems with the lack of oxygen in the sea bottom, but also the reality of the pollution. This was the starting point of which HALCOM, a pioneering convention, was founded back in 1974. With the adoption of HALCOM Baltic Sea Action Plan in 2007, and since 2008, the EU Marine Strategy Framework Directive is taking the same approach and HELCOM has become the coordinating regional platform for the directive in the Baltic Sea region. The coming years, policy decision making in the Baltic Sea region will give an increasing attention to development of indicators, monitoring programs and action programs. And it is clear that research in general, and the bonus program in particular, will have an increasingly important role. And I would like to bring out four aspects in this context. Firstly, to produce knowledge and highlight the value of the marine ecosystem. Secondly, defining the ecological boundaries for decision making. And thirdly, the design of a cost efficient action program. And fourthly, providing long term scenarios of changes in the ecosystem to facilitate for an adaptive management. And one example where bring all those four factors together is the ecosystem-based maritime spatial planning. And this brings me to the second point that I would like to bring up, and that is the need and the role of research for innovation and business development. And just last week, I was in a national or local workshop in Sweden called Sundsvall. And the focus in that workshop was really about maritime spatial planning for blue growth and a healthy marine environment. And the local workshop gathered business community from the region, policymakers and scientists. And we all explored and discussed the possibility, but also the limits and challenges of maritime spatial planning. <laughs> and I think the workshop was very timely from two perspectives. One is the need for maritime spatial planning due to we have more and more forces would like to, that would like to sort of get together from the ocean. Either it's ocean, it's renewable, it's a fishing, it's a tourism industry. There is sort of a competitiveness about the resources in the ocean. So we need an overall planning. And the second is the development of blue growth and the corporate responsibility for the ocean and for the seas. And at the same time as the blue growth, we also see the blue growth on the international agenda. And just the other week, 
We heard, for example, Robert Zollick, which we know is the president of the World Bank, and he's sending out an SOS, saving our oceans. And the Sea Rescue Service being the Blue Growth Agenda. And at the same time, on an EU level, the maritime policy is also clearing and spelling out the blue growth that will help EU to steer out of its current economic crisis. This is maritime dimension of the European 2020 strategy, and it tends to contribute to the EU's international competitiveness, resource efficiency, and job creation, and of course, new sources of growth. And I see three sort of elements on this blue growth agenda, which is a particular importance. And the first is the link to the innovative agenda. We have new business models, new business opportunities arise, for example, by developing the aquaculture, exploding the marine mining, the ocean and the seas renewable technology, but also the expansion of the tourism industry. And secondly, the role of the private sector to conduct responsible business practice. And this implies having the international agreed framework as guiding principles when doing business in the ocean or in the seas. And clearly, those two points sets out a win-win situation if responsible business practice could be linked to an innovative agenda exploring business opportunities that could create jobs and a healthy marine environment. But at the same time, let me be clear, blue growth is not in contradiction of a preserving a resilient marine coastal ecosystem. Rather, it's quite the opposite. Business opportunities can only be utilized if we do have a healthy environment. So what does this mean for the role of research to support innovation and business development? And as we all know, research is closely linked to the business opportunities. We need the cooperation with the scientific community, policy, de policy decision makers and entrepreneurs is the iron triangle of success. Research alert where and when problems arise, but research evaluates environmental impacts of different technological, technical solutions. And therefore, it's very timely that the first bonus calls on a viable ecosystem and, in, and innovation I also welcome the call of innovation arranged in collaboration with the EU strategy for the Baltic Sea region, the flagship project BR, BR, BSR STARS. This is a clear sign the bonus program serves not only supported to the HELCOM work, but to a broader policy agenda. And I think it would be quite exciting to follow up all those projects in the coming years. Well, this year, in 2013, as Halle just pointed out, the HELCOM ministerial meeting will be evaluate the progress in the implementation of the Baltic Sea Action Plan. Based on scientific evidence, tough decision needs to be taken that will create long-term stable structures that can enable investment in new business opportunities. The area of ecosystem approach in decision making has only started. HELCOM is taking the lead and the bonus program is playing an increasingly important role. And the business community is engaging even more in finding innovative solutions. These are all positive developments. And I'm sure that this conference will bring new insights and knowledge and sharing experiences. And I'm quite happy to be able to share those here with you today. But lastly, let me just ask Helle from the Danish Helcom Secretariat to come up because I have one more task to accomplish before I, before I leave, on behalf of the Minister of Environment. And that is to hand over this famous key. I'm not sure how many have seen it, but Sweden received it from our Russian counterpart. And I'm very pleased to be able to give this to you forward and to show the interconnection between the different chair chairmanships. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you very much. <laughs> 